Hi and welcome to Homo Ludens, the show on history and board games. Uh, this is going to be the episode two of our four-part series on the British Way End of Empire uh, campaign. So it's something that we started last month with Drew Dewhurst and with a professional comment by uh, Stephen Ranganzas uh, to talk about the British Way upcoming uh, coin game uh, in the coin series that is a bit of a different one because it's a four-pack uh, game, so it's, uh, it's quite uh, unusual uh, and makes it pretty interesting because you can play the four games one after another. Uh, last, week, last month we played Palestine, this month we're going to play Malaya. Uh, and I hope that it's going to be slightly better uh, for the British uh, than it was last month. Or do I? Maybe I don't care. Maybe I'm happy that uh, the British Empire is collapsing. Who knows? Um, and as we had last month, we have the same two guests. I have my opponent and nemesis and uh, design husband and co-host and all of those things, Joe Dewhurst. Hey, Joe, how are you? Uh, hi, Fred. I'm very well. Uh, I'm also the developer of the game, which does give me perhaps a slight edge uh, in, the, in the tournament. Or yeah, the I don't know. I think I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I have. I feel good about this one. We had a practice round this morning uh, and it went really, really well. So I'm very confident about what's going to happen tonight. Uh, so that's going to go extremely well. And we also have with us uh, the designer, uh, Stephen Ranganzas. Hey, Stephen, thanks for being here again this month. Yep. Hey, everybody. And I hope that we'll have you for uh, the next couple of months. And just for a bit of timeline, we do a pause in uh, December, and uh, episode three should be in January, mm -hmm. and potentially episode four in February, if everything goes well. Thanks everyone that is being watching that is watching us tonight. Uh, as usual, of course, if you have questions uh, to us about the game, if you have questions to Stephen about the design, everything, feel free to just write those questions in the chat. I will bring them on screen, and uh, we can react uh, live while we play. Uh, so that's what we do. And if you're watching after the fact, uh, you can look in the description. I will probably have added time codes in there so you can navigate to different sections of the video. Um, but just to be clear. This is not really a rule stitch, uh, contrary to the other games that we usually do on that uh, channel. We are really here to show uh, a full campaign, so to, demonst to demonstrate the, the three, the four games all together, but also see how uh, they all interconnect with each other. Uh, so it's more of a campaign thing. But we'll try as much as we can, Joe and I, to also explain what we do while we play. Uh, but don't expect a, a full rule stitch video. If that's what you're looking for, well. Too bad. Uh, and uh, yeah, and thanks for everyone who's already here. I see that Brendan is here. So uh, good evening, Brendan. Thanks for being here. Uh, Daniel is here. Uh, Germany versus Spain. I don't think it's going to be a beautiful match. Those are two B-tier teams. Uh, I think that none of them is going to win. Uh, I think it's pretty boring. France has won their two first matches. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to win this uh, World Cup again. So. I don't think it's worth it to watch it. This is going to be the this is this, this is entertainment right here. This is you're you're on the right channel, Daniel. Uh, and Thomas, thanks for being here. Also, what do we need to say before we start playing? I was thinking maybe Stephen, you can give a bit of historical context on um, on the Malayan emergency. I guess we could probably start with this. What do you think? Yeah, I can start with that. But if you recall, you're supposed to give a little time to Joe to tell them about the update with the British way. Oh, yeah. We're supposed to sell those games. I forgot about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, Joe, you're the company man here. You're the only one on the GMT payroll. We don't have to do that. You do. So we'll let you go with it. Uh, there isn't really much I wanted to say. Just just uh, the exciting news that we've uh, finalized all the, all the files for the game. And they'll soon be sent off to the printer, hopefully. So the game, the game is finished on our end. And within some, some months should be shipping out to all of you. That's very exciting. A natural salesman. Very, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Joe. Uh, do we have an idea of around when we can we can expect the game? Just a, a... Uh, it, It's very unpredictable just with the current kind of uh, global situation, but, um, uh, you know, early-ish early in 2023. 20, so by the time we finish the campaign in, in February, I'll have a, a clearer idea probably. Yeah, okay, but that's good to good to know. Uh, so it's a, actually maybe a good thing that we push it up until February, so we should get pretty closer to um, uh, to know when the game is going to be out. Great. Uh, so we've done the we've done the homework. So now we can talk about the mm -hmm. the history, if that's good. Yes. All right. So we're playing Malaya today, which for many people I think might be the most famous game in the multi pack because it's kind of the canonical case of. British counterinsurgency success that at least a lot of other countries have studied, whether rightfully or wrongfully, about how to wage counterinsurgency. 
And so where we're picking up is the game is going to start basically right where the emergency is declared in June 1948. And so like the MCP is starting to remobilize from um, and the British are also kind of also unsure about what's really going on in the countryside. And part of the reason why that's the case is that, um, as many of you might know, Britain actually during World War II lost Malaya to Japan. So Japan occupied the Malayan Peninsula in Singapore. And so when Britain comes back after World War II, there's kind of a lot of basically just chaos going on in the countryside or a lot of, you know, because the state doesn't have a monopoly on violence. So you have ex um, KMT um, Chinese guerrillas, you have the MCP and the for, um, their former resistance movement against Japan, you have bandits, you have triads, uh, criminal syndicates, all going around. And so in the years leading up to June 1948, the British are trying to make sense of this kind of en endemic low level violence and labor unrest across the um, country. And so the MCP is kind of able to skirt for a while and clandestinely rebuilding up their forces. But then eventually the British kind of stumble into the emergency in the summer of 1948 after a couple of settlers um, are killed as part of that labor violence. And the MCP are kind of taken off guard because they were hoping to actually have a few more months to remobilize their forces. And so that's kind of where we are right now is both sides in the Malayan emergency kind of stumble into each other. And we'll see if um, that kind of stumbling behavior is continued by Joe and Fred. I think maybe by Fred, but we'll yeah, see. Yeah, I have a very much a stumbling behavior. So uh, I'm going to definitely role play that. Uh, good. But uh, thanks for, for the context. Maybe I can uh, uh, bring in the map to actually start showing the situation before we, uh, before we start uh, playing. And we can potentially uh, do a bit of a reminder of uh, what happened in uh, Palestine the other months. Uh, so here you have the focus on the um, End of Empire campaign map. Uh, and we have the the, the result of the uh, of the game that we have in Palestine uh, uh, the other months. So I, a brutal loss uh, for for uh, for the British colonial empire. So this is at surrender, and I lost I think four four prestige. Right, uh, I think I was somewhere around here when we started. I don't remember. Yes. Where do uh, where start, we... start on thirteen, and then yeah, it went down to to nine. That's right. Yep, yeah, so you lost okay. four. Yep, which is close to the historical outcome. The British did quite badly in Palestine, so that's a good start. But, and this is the situation. So we have Malaya here, uh, and uh, maybe just to explain what are going to be the different blocks. Uh, the MCP guerrillas or those uh, red um, hexagonal cylinders, their bases, as you would find in any other con game. And then on my side, I have the military and the police uh, that I'm uh, working with, two economical centers, and Kuala Lumpur in the middle. Uh, maybe do you want to explain a bit, Stephen, what are some of the differences with the other games in the in the series? Just highlights what makes this one a bit uh, special compared to to the other three. Yeah, so in some sense, what makes this one special is also why you know maybe some people will find it a little standard or boring from the coin series perspective. Is that Malaya, in some sense, wrote the textbook on how to do the Western approach to counterinsurgency. And so this game, I really designed it with the idea that it would be the best introduction to the other modern coin volumes like Cuba Libre, Andean Abyss, Farna Lake, etc. Um, and so this one is probably the closest to the experience of a kind of standard government versus insurgent. And then the other ones are all kind of um, variations from that with um, Palestine and Cyprus being the biggest variations. That being said, Malaya still has some nice twists to it. So for instance, uh, hopefully over the course of this game, we'll see the new villages be used, which is kind of the cornerstone of British strategy in Malaya, which is the use of um, essentially force, forcibly relocating Chinese squatters into these villages and theoretically providing nice benefits to them that will shift their support towards the British. Um, and then there's a few other things, um, for instance, like the British commander will kind of like uh, shift over time and you'll see the kind of development of British counterinsurgency strategy over Malaya. Uh, that it'll, it'll kind of push you in the historical direction, but you don't necessarily have to follow it. And yeah, I think we'll see a couple other things when they come up. But this one was really supposed to be, if you're new to coin, this is where I would start to go to the rest of the series. And if you're a coin veteran, I would start with this one simply to understand how some of these new things about the multi-pack that we saw last time in Palestine are going to work like victory in the new sequence of play. Yeah. Fred, Fred this morning actually asked me, what are these new villages even for? So uh, hopefully we'll see him use them, but um, mm -hmm. maybe not, not to a great start there for the British. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I also have uh, one other thing I wanted to announce, because uh, I was curious. I was curious whether Malaysia, uh, the modern state that formed after this, uh, was in the World Cup. And they're not in the World Cup because they uh, lost in the qualifiers to Vietnam last year. So Stephen's other favourite um, insurgency country kicked them out of the World Cup, in fact. So I can't cheer for Malaysia in the World Cup, sadly. But you can cheer for Vietnam. I can cheer for Vietnam, I believe, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, great, but I think we can probably start. And as I said earlier, so if you're joining the stream right now, if you have questions about uh, the game, we're not going to do a, or a teach or anything, but we're going to explain what we do. But if you have questions, bring them up. Uh, Steven can react. Steven is going to be the more the facilitator of this game. So Joe and I would be focusing on playing it. So it means that Steven will have all the time in the world to answer all of your questions. So feel free to ask anything that you want to do. And the first thing that we do is we do the pre-war options, right? Yes, that's right. Right, oh, so and we have a first question. Yeah. We have an important question, which I'll let Stephen answer. Yeah. Uh, yes. So this is exactly why Kenya was the hardest to design. So I, I didn't feel like you could leave Kenya out because Kenya is kind of the the best exemplar of um, br British brutality at the period. And so, yes, the concentration camps, so the villagization, and also the um, violence in the uh, detention camps, which we refer to as the pipeline. So you'll see in January when they play that, that that's like a it's a major part of the game that you can't avoid. And, and that was included largely to show that the British don't always use this kind of hearts and minds approach. Um, and uh, in Kenya, it was pretty much both sides are trying to out victimize the civilians um, and as their approach to winning. So it's probably the most difficult to play um, in terms of, you know, being a contra kind of controversial or sensitive topic. But I think it was really important to include a good question. And Russ, uh, very shameful. I'm shocked that you're late. Good, but we haven't started yet. We are about to roll on the pre-war option table. So those are yep. the different options that we can have at the and beginning. And perhaps before we roll, Stephen could say a little about what, what this is about. So each each of these games has got this pre-war options table, which you can use either in the campaign or just on a standalone game, which which slightly modifies the starting setup with a focus on one particular feature of the, the kind of starting uh, scenario so what what's what's the labor unrest situation in malaya student yeah so i was i was kind of talking with the historical background you know in these years between like 1946 when the british come back and june 1948 when the emergency is declared there's kind of this ambiguous low-level violence by all these uh, forms of armed groups and also a lot of that violence is directed towards kind of labor clashes between essentially mcp backed unions and the british trying to reassert kind of settler uh, dominance over some economic resources like rubber and tin and um, other you know economic activity. And so it's really a clash between those two. And what we're trying to see with the pre-war table is, um, does do the British um, figure out when the MCP is mobilizing or do the British kind of, the MCP get all the way out to September, which is what they wanted um, without the British detecting them because of the fact that the labor unrest is kind of hiding their regrouping. Okay. So we'll I'll roll a dice now on this table. Four. So you Four. got the historical outcome. So, um, yeah. the, you know, the British, some settlers um, are killed, and then the British declare emergency in June 1948. So nothing ahistorical happened. Good. And that actually lets us highlight another interesting feature of this game in the pack, which is in, in the other three games, the insurgents uh, act first, right at the beginning of each game. So they kind of seize the initiative. But in this one, as Stephen said a couple of times, the MCP weren't really prepared when, when the British struck. So so Fred um, hopefully will be able to take advantage of that um, first turn to, to really put, put the pressure on me. Um, but before, before he does that, the British need to draw an end of empire campaign event uh, to have a look at what's going on elsewhere in the British Empire. Yep. And probably good things are happening because that's usually what happens in that deck. Always good things. Mm -hmm. And I have oh, actually a good thing. <laughs> so Oh, yeah, I was making a joke, but actually, this is actually pretty good. So my resource starts at 10, which is I think I start at 14 normally, right? Or uh, you start at 20 normally. Um, oh, so okay. you your resource is already at 20. Okay. So, uh, yep. So you get to increase. Prestige, yeah, increases by one. So I go from nine to 10. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So that gets you a long-term advantage in the whole campaign because you're fighting communists this time. Yeah, yep. that would have been better on uh, yeah beginning of Propaganda 2 if I reached uh, Propaganda 2. So, yeah, so it might so, be good now. <laughs> yeah, it might be good now, you know, at least uh, because if I lose dramatically here, I'm going to be at 10. I would put me at 6. I would have a slight buffer of one point before going into, into total humiliation. 
uh, which is um which is my ambition try to end at five uh, so yeah. for the campaign might be too ambitious uh we'll see okay so yeah now we're into the regular game and uh you can take your first turn so we'll draw uh, an event for the first turn of the game and just maybe we can explain how the deck is being built for uh for this one uh, uh yes yeah, so it's it's the same as uh, sorry Stephen. Oh, I was just going to say, and I'll answer uh, Molotov's question here in a second, which is that, no, you don't see the next card. So where it's essentially it's going to be eight card uh, campaign. Oh, sorry, six. <laughs> even, I, even I got it wrong. So this is what happens when you design too many coin games. So the six card um, campaigns with the propaganda card shuffled into the bottom two, and you'll do that three times. So essentially we can, they'll play at least four cards here before we see the, potentially could see the propaganda. Um, and then we're going to run through that as, uh, three times. So you'll you'll have anywhere between what would that be like sixteen to eighteen total cards. So it's a, a much quicker um, game. But the the deck construction for this one and all the games are the same, except for the fact that Malaya has this variant where you can make the deck a little bit longer um, if you want to play you know a, a more drawn out game, which we're not doing today. No. Nope. Great. Uh, so Urban Calm. British free train in Kuala Lumpur, then conduct the free limited operation in or adjacent to Kuala Lumpur, and you can place a guerrilla in Kuala Lumpur. Which begins at support, so otherwise very hard for me to get into, like in other yeah. games. Mm. So are the win conditions the same as Palestine? This is another good question, and the answer is no. So two of the games use what we might think of as a, a pull-down or exhaustion win condition where you're trying to pull British political will all the way to zero. And those are the two counterterrorism games, Palestine and Cyprus. In uh, uh, Kenya and Malaya, because the insurgents are trying to really take over the state, what it is is that political will is on kind of a bargaining model um, scale where the British can win either a minor victory, the insurgents can win a minor victory, or both can win a major victory. Or in the very center at 10, that's kind of like a peace settlement where they there's kind of a draw and both sides don't get everything that they want. And so in this one, it's a little bit different where you're, the game will only end early if, one, if Fred or Joe are able to pull their British political will either to the very top or the very bottom in those areas that are shaded in a darker color. Yeah. Yeah, and so in the campaign, I believe, in the end of Empire campaign, a, a draw at the end of this or Kenya is a minor British victory as yes. well. Because uh, yeah. yeah. it kind of maintains the state square more or less. Mm -hmm. Good, uh, but now, yeah. Generally when people, I won't give it away, um, but we'll see after Fred goes, I'll explain what I'm about to say. But another feature of this game is that the in Malaya, the, um, the MCP's uh, base of support was really the Chinese minority, whereas the majority that Malays were essentially supporting the British, which gives them some advantages with how they can place their pieces, which is generally how one wants to start the game. And I might have given it away too much, um, but essentially they can place things a little bit easier than in some of these other counterinsurgency campaigns, which is another kind of like small little subtle variant in Malaya compared to other games. But will Fred take advantage of that? That is the question. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I'm going to not take care about the event. Uh, I'm going to do a full turn. So absent SA. Um, and I will start by doing the resettle action. So that's a special activity that lets me place a new village. Uh, and Gurney is here. Gurney is my current commander. So I can actually, uh, oh no, that's going to be with Briggs that I can do it, that I can do it twice. So I'm only going to be able to do it once uh, during this campaign. Hmm. Uh, um, yeah. Oops. I yeah, once this. Time. yeah. Uh, no, but. No, I, I mean that when Briggs is going to come up for for the next. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, okay, but I'm still going to do I'm still going to do uh, still going to do a resettle, uh, and I'm going to resettle in Perak. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to place one village. But you don't uh, put a uh, tear down the resettle. Ah, okay. Oh, oh, it's when I do reprisal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This uh, this does shift to opposition. Right? So I shift to a position. That's good. Because the population doesn't appreciate being placed in the village. And I'm going to place the village marker here because uh, while you think about the train, I'll, I'll explain what this does. So this new village marker indicates that, um, well, Stephen can say that most, mostly some of the, the Chinese population probably have been put into these uh, camps to control them and they don't appreciate that. So there's opposition there now. 
Um, but it also blocks the opposition from being countered in the propaganda realm, so that won't hurt Fred right now. And it also prevents me from, from rallying in that space. So he's kind of locked down my core support population there. Yeah, exactly. So in other words, they don't like the British, and the other, they might even be w wanting to support the MCP because they're pissed about being moved into their uh, a, basically a tightly controlled camp with all their stuff being burned to the ground. But because they're in a tightly controlled camp, at least for right now, the MCP can't really get access to them, which is why Joe doesn't get the points for them and he can't recruit there. But if Joe were to march in there and get rid of that, then you can see how this would be a somewhat self-defeating strategy. I'm going to do four trains. Uh, so in Kedak, Perak, uh, Kuala Lumpur, and Negris and Bilan. Uh, when I do it in Kuala Lumpur, I can do four cubes, and it can be a mix and match of uh, troops and police. Yep. And I think I'm going to do four troops. Mm -hmm. In Kuala Lumpur, then I'm going to do two police here because I don't have any choice. Two police here. Two police here and two police here. That's uh, you've done five spaces now. Did you want to do Selangor? Uh, oh no, I wanted to do four. Wait a minute. Yeah. Which no, well, that's oh, Selangor is the one I didn't want to do. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to add British control on these as well, as you know. Yeah. Uh, so that means that I did four. So that puts me uh, down from 20 to 12. And we see another main difference with this game, actually, in the pack, which is that the British are also constrained by resources, resources. Um, which isn't true in Kenya and in Cyprus and Palestine, neither side. Uh, so in this side, both of us are constrained by resources, which is more typical for games in the coin series. And actually, I think I will not do it in... I think I will not do it in Kedah. Sorry. Okay. Uh... Should I? Should I do it in Keda? Oh, maybe I should. We'll see. Uh, I will keep it, and then I will uh, do... Uh, so I'm thinking about uh, doing a pacify here, uh, because I train in here. The thing is that, so during the propaganda, this oppose is not going to impact my political will because there is a village. But would the support favor me, or the new village uh, prevents uh, anything? The support, the support would, but pacify in this game is limited to one shift per per pacify, so you could only shift it to neutral at this point. Yeah, but you could do that if you wanted. Uh, boom, boom, boom. I'm I thinking... do still have an underground gorilla there. That's, yeah, that's the thing. That's I, I might do it. I might do it for nothing if I do it. Um, so mm -hmm. no, probably not. I, I will. Uh, I, this would be my turn. So I did. One resettle and four trains. Mm -hmm. And it's back to you, Joe. Good. Um, I will take the event because it's almost impossible to get into Kuala Lumpur Kuala Lumpur. otherwise. Yep. So I will sneak in a girl and I get to place one there. This is also a good make a bit yeah. more space. Yeah. And there was basically no significant violence in Kuala Lumpur, I believe, during the. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there might be this game. Here we go. I'm in. And then we go. So yeah, we, we reset the same as in the other game. So I become first eligible because I was further left on that track. And then we go to the next event, which is food denial. Lovely British strategy. Hmm. Mm, it's not much use. So I could get one resource from the new village that Fred put down. But that's yeah. And I can not, remove not you one resource, useful. which is not, not exactly what I want. Uh, yeah, exactly. OK. Um, so I'll take a full operation special activity, and perhaps I could just show my player aid for the audience. Uh, hopefully people can see that at least a bit. Um, so I'm also going to begin probably yeah, in classic coin fashion, and I will rally and extort in a second. So I'll use his share on rallying. So I will rally in uh, Kadar and Selangor. Maybe some blend, two, three. Uh, Kalantan. Mm. Trangani, two, three, four, five. And I'll actually do a second one. No, I won't do one there. It's foolishness. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'll rally here as well. So that will be rallying in six spaces, which will cost me six resources. And then I'll put them down as I go. So one here. Um, in Pahang, I can put two because I can put um, I can rally up to the number of bases plus population in the space. Um, 
here I just put one, here I put one, here I put one. Um, and furthermore, this, oh yeah, and then sorry, and I, I only have two left, so I just put two there. Um, I now control Solangor, and this is one of the MTP victory conditions. So whenever I gain MTP control in a space, um, the population is removed from the political world. So that shifts down one, as is now MTP authority in that uh, region. And then finally, I also have an option with Rally to agitate in a space with a base. So I'm going to agitate in Clanton. So I'm going to spend one resource to shift it to opposition there. That's my kind of main headquarters right now, I suppose. Oops. And then I'm um, quite long resources, so I'll extort. And extort lets me um, activate drillers in up to two spaces to gain resources. But I can't do it in a space with a new village because I can't get to anyone. So I will just extort in uh, Kalantan and Trangani there to gain two resources. And that's my turn. Complete. Complete myself. Mm. Okay. Um, let me think. Oh, and just for the so um, light green is jungle, uh, dark green is mountain. Uh, this is Thailand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And the British cannot enter Thailand. He's counting in French, which is always a good sign. I've mm -hmm. got him on the ropes. Okay, uh, I'm going to do a limited up, and I'm going to do a limited sweep in Pahang. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five. And six. Yeah. And that means that I'm going to show three. Yeah, so you need two, two cubes, in fact, for each uh, one you activate. And you also gain control here now because you have more pieces than me, um, which will increase the Increase the political win by one. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's it. And that costs you two resources. Yes. So uh, should be on 10 now. Yeah, yeah it should be on 10. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Limited sweep, which is quite a powerful thing in this two player sequence of play doing a limited sweep, I would say. Um, uh, very nice. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, but I, don't, British. I don't have time for this. Um, so I'm going to do up in uh, up in SA, uh, and I'm going to take the advantage of having Gurney uh, as a commander to do uh, reprisal on two uh, spaces. Uh, so what I am going to do is, hmm. where am I going to do? So I need to have British troops to be able to do reprisal. So the first one that I'm going to do is here, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so this is going here. Uh, and the other space where I could do it is in Perak or Jory. Yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking about potentially kicking you out mm -hmm. of Jory. Into Negri Sunderland. Yeah, so that loses you control, but that's not a problem for you yet. Yeah, I don't. Points. Yeah, I don't yeah. really care care about yeah. this, and I will need to add terror markers to those um, yeah. uh, spaces. I put some sensibly sized terror markers there, by the way. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait a minute. And I do that, and then it shifts towards new. Uh, it shifts mm -hmm. toward opposition, right? Uh, to neutral. So ah, to neutral. I mean, mm. Yeah. So you. Yeah. Mm. So actually, I'm going to do it in Perak instead. Yeah. yeah, so we can set both of these to neutral. Yep. So yep. you've eliminated some opposition. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to play Terror in Perak, uh, Terror in Pahang. And now I'm going to be able to do my other action, uh, which is Assault. And I'm going to Assault in Pahang. Mm -hmm. And the Assault costs me two resources. So that puts me down to eight. I remove those three guerrillas. And more importantly, that base, that gives me a political win of one. Yep. So you're so, doing better than you, Sazaman. Go on, Perry. I was just going to say that, you know, I think that this is a good uh, illustration of why 
even though at the end of the conflict, sometimes it looked like the British were doing pretty benevolent means in Malaya. But this is actually a pretty standard process of how the British use the new villages is you first put people in the new villages, which shifts them towards opposition. You then use coercive measures within those new villages, which would be represented by reprisal here to get rid of that opposition. And then you he's eventually, I'm suspecting, going to use um, kind of uh, pacification or like provision of benefits to shift that towards support, even though it's going to be a little bit more costly there for him because of the tear. Um, but that's essentially the process. And you can see that there's a lot of violence against civilians and also coercion against civilians before you get to that happy ending. And I think that that's a, an important thing to illustrate here. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to take a limited up. Uh, the event's not so much interest. And I will actually march. And march normally costs me one resource, but I'm allowed to march into these economic centers for zero resources. So I'm going to sneak into this economic center, which I believe is a tin mine in the north there. Mm -hmm. Um, there we go, one of the major exports. Okay, uh, nationalist mm -hmm. parties for the next event. Oh, yeah, this is probably the best British event because yeah. it represents the major alternative to the MCP, which is that there is a nationalist Malay party and um, Chinese party, the MCA, and that they essentially allowed Britain to undercut the MCP's whole purpose, since arguably for existing, which is that they were going to grant independence to these peaceful nationalist parties rather than have the MCP do it violently. Um, so that's why it's probably the strongest event for the British in the game. So I have a bit of a dilemma now. Um, so one thing worth mentioning about the series mechanics is, is the only way I can prevent Fred from playing this event is either by playing the event myself or taking the event option on the sequence of play and then uh, passing, which would just gain me one resource. Um, and it, I mean, it is quite a nice event for me. So in other circumstances, I might do that, but I'm quite well placed to do some other things. So I'm going to take a full often special activity turn. And I will first uh, terror, well, no, I can terror with extort, can't I? So I'm going to have to do that because I want to terror in, you know, one, two, three, four, five, at least six spaces right now. Um, you won't have to pay for the EC, but. That's true. Yeah. So that, that will cost me zero resources. But I still, I think, want to. Yeah, you only have five resources so, anyway. So that's that's good. Yeah, if you do I six, mean, including an EC. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll do those first, and we can see what it looks like. So in all of these, I activate one drill. Um, that will cost me five resources total, because it's three in the EC. Uh, in the EC, I just place a sabotage marker down, which will block mm -hmm. uh, Fred's income from there and also gain me points from intimidating the um, colonialists. And then in each of the other ones, I place a terror mark and shift it one step towards opposition. Um, so that just removes support in Kuala Lumpur. It will also gain me additional points in the propaganda round. And this one here. So that's quite a big wave of terror there. Um, and then I'm down to zero resources. So I could have intimidated, but I can't really do that anymore. So I'm just going to extort in Tringanu and Glantan and gain two resources back. That's my turn there. But Fred's going to be able to undo some of this damage immediately with the national yeah. party. I'm going to I'm going to take the event because that will keep me with the initiative and that will help me undo some of the stuff that you've done. The first thing is that I'm going to shift Perak actually to uh, support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this will actually that... immediately so that's a one. This will actually immediately remove the new village marker. Um, so they get removed under a few conditions. One of which is a space having no MCP in and being at support. Um, is that right, Stephen? Or yes. just being at support, possibly? Yeah. No, it's uh, there can't be any yeah. MCP there because what the British policy was that if you can get rid of the um, MCP and also the people seem to be cooperating with the British, they would declare the area a white area, which means that it's MCP free, and they would re reduce all the restrictions on movement, food controls, all that stuff. Which is why the British player, once they get it to support no MCP, they have to get rid of the. Um, New village, which also lets them uh, use those resources somewhere else, essentially. Yeah. So that's one you shifted, and you can shift one other. So. Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to shift uh, Kuala Lumpur back to support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. And, and you, you gain one political will as well. So it goes yeah. up to 14. Yeah, and we're done. Now I'll draw the next card. Mm, please uh, not be a propaganda. Yes. It's not. It's uh, chemical defense. Uh, for each base in the jungle province. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a round of assaults. Mm -hmm. um, oh. But assaults is only troops. Mm -hmm. Ugh. 
Uh, you could you could remove some though, and yeah. I think importantly you could remove that one gorilla in Kuala Lumpur, which is otherwise going to. Yeah, I I, I want to remove the one in Kuala Lumpur. That's for sure. But I could, yeah, I could good old gurney. <laughs> yeah, I could yeah. I could do it for something else. Uh, but then if I do this, um, yeah. Fun fact about doesn't... Gurney, who's the British commander right now in Malaya, is that he was actually also a high, I'm pretty sure high commissioner in Palestine. And that um, some of he, for instance, was very reluctant, even though the MCP were being very threatening to declare martial law because he saw the political consequences. It's basically an omission of defeat in Palestine. And so you can think of it as Fred's horrendous defeat last stream in Palestine <laughs> has led Gurney to uh, refuse, even though Joe has spread opposition and terror all throughout the peninsula to declare martial law. Yeah, although Gurney's not, I mean, it's it, he isn't doing a sub kindness for his own heart. He's not averse yeah. to some fairly violent uh, strategy, so. Yeah, because the thing is that if I do an assault, um, if I do an assault now, uh, it's actually a bit, it feels a bit useless because I'm going to be able to remove only two mm -hmm. of those uh of those guerrillas and then the uh, the thing that i can do with assault actually i could do an airstrike with it mm -hmm. um, that would let you clear up those spots where there's only police actually yeah exactly that's what i'm thinking so i could it's not ideal but it's probably for the best um so i'm going to do assault in Jore and kuala lumpur uh enabling me to remove those two that's going to cost me four if i remember well mm -hmm. yeah so that puts me down at four and then I'm going to be able to airstrike in two spaces, uh, two provinces with British pieces, and I remove one active guerrilla in each. So that means that I can remove this one in the south and the one in Kedah over there. Okay. It also stops me taking a full turn, which is good. Because I think your, your other possible option would have just been to do a limited assault in Kuala Lumpur. Right? Yeah, but uh, there, is a, there is a good chance now that the next card is going to be a propaganda card. Yeah. yeah, although in this one, compared to Palestine, we keep the initiative order into the next round. So if oh, you were first yeah. eligible, mm -hmm. you would keep it. Which I forgot about good. that. Yeah. yeah, but this this keeps the pressure on me a lot. This this uh, game in particular can become quite of an economic one, I think, where if if Fred can force me to spend a lot of resources putting troops back down, um, I, I can really end up quite stuck. Um, so I'm going to, with that in mind, I'm going to do something which will surprise Stephen a lot. I'm going to take a limited operation and rally. Um, to place a base down. What? You never uh, place which, bases. No, no I always base. forget. But, <laughs> that's not what um, I was expecting. Yeah. That's well, not what I been promised. Yeah. That I, yeah, I feel betrayed. I yeah. I'm, I'm politically disinclined to, to put down to organize. Bases, yes. uh, to organize, yeah. Yes. The question is, though, where do I put it? In Trinkenau, it would be kind of defenseless. Um, but in Kalantan, it would just be putting a big target on his head. But so I'm going to put it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be first. If, if, yeah, I'm going to be first on the next time. So I'm going to put one down in Trinkenau there. Uh, so I need to remove two gorillas and put a base down. And this will gain me resources in the propaganda round. That's the key thing mm -hmm. here. So there we go. So Limited one, commander. They, uh, they didn't take the event. But one quick thing I'll say about this specific yeah. event is that I think everybody, a lot of people at least who are interested in these types of games have probably heard of Agent Orange in uh, Vietnam, which is featured in Fire and Lake. But actually, the British used chemical defoliants in Malaya before the U.S. used them in Vietnam, um, even though they a lot of the spray was either done by helicopters or... By on the ground, and they kind of decided that it wasn't really worth the uh, suffering to human beings. Um, and unfortunately, the United States did not learn that lesson um, before going. Is that the would you say that in particular is why they chose not to do it? Um, was that, was um, that their, their main mission? Yeah. So they were mainly using one thing that they were mainly using it for was to destroy isolated rice plots of the um, indigenous population, um, and uh, they kind of decided that victimizing those people was probably just pushing them more into the mm -hmm. the MCP and that it couldn't really be practically used that much. And the United States was just like, we're going to throw more money behind this. And <laughs> um, <laughs> and then they used it on a much more aggressive scale with, I would say, ambiguous military effects and um, pretty clear ethical <laughs> implications. Yeah. Um, in the, this, so this might be me misremembering, but in the USA, is it the case that they were using it more to try and get rid of cover rather than to destroy crops, or at least that was the yeah. So Agent, Agent yeah. Orange, which would be, I would say, roughly between 80 to 85 percent of the chemical spray in Vietnam was used to um, cover uh, deep, would be referred to as defoliation so that you could um, better protect lines of communication or bases or deep uh, forest uh, Viet Cong bases. 
And then the other 15 to 20 percent was crop destruction, which is a little bit closer in some ways to what the British were doing in Malaya, which is really Agent Blue because there's this rainbow of um, horrific cancer causing agents um, in Vietnam. And Agent Blue was used specifically designed to quickly kill rice crops that were right about to be harvested. And they used that essentially in the um, central highlands. So think first and second core or in rice deficit areas to essentially starve the Viet Cong. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. So with that in mind, I just want to say yep. one thing before we draw the new cards. So we have uh, just want to shout out to so Dexter, who's in the chat, uh, Satlam Gaming, who also has a rather new uh, YouTube channel that talks a lot about con games. Very interesting channel. So go check it out after the show. But uh, <laughs> but I, I really recommend it. Is that easy to find if we just search Satlam Gaming and? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you should start a game, you should be able to 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 find it easily. And Dexter, feel free to add the link to your channel in the chat uh, for people to to check it out. Great. And for Nicholas, there'll be plenty of bombing trees in the next uh, game as well. Some of that goes on in Kenya, I would say. Yes. Yeah. Um, among other bad things. Okay. So the next card then is blah, 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 drum roll. The propaganda. propaganda. That was yeah, fifty percent chance, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So me, me and Fred both kind of knew that was likely to come. So we'll maybe this first one go through the propaganda round to cheat quite uh, procedurally so people can see what's going on. Yeah. So uh, um, I'm not sure what the best way for you to show them that here is yet. So first we have this political will phase, which happens in all, all four games. And in this one, um, the main thing is actually a fairly straightforward kind of standard coin comparison of opposition uh, to support, but bearing in mind that we ignore opposition in spaces with new villages. So we can see that I've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven opposition, uh, eight, nine. Uh, all right, five, six, seven. Yeah, I've got nine opposition. This may, may be the high point of opposition for me, but that's good for now. But Fred's actually managed to get uh, five support. So that's only a net minus four. Uh, so hold that number in mind. I'm going to follow the rules strictly. We don't change anything yet. We I'm going to write it down. Yep. I'm going to um, write it down. So we're for now yep. at minus four. Yeah. Most of the time, you can just do it as you go, but there's occasional cases where it's important. So minus four. And then we look at settlers intimidated. So um, I, I if if this EC wasn't sabotaged where I had a gorilla, I could uh, sabotage it it's because I have more than police. And then we remove uh, one political will for the sabotage marker and the EC and the terror marker in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, so that's another minus two. So that's minus six total, I believe. So we'll go down from 14 to eight. Um, but as I said, this is possibly the high point for the MCP um, and things could go downhill for me from now. Then uh, if we'd met, if either of us had met our automatic victory conditions, the game would end, which as Stephen was explaining earlier, is this, these kind of dark colored bands at the top and bottom. Um, so that doesn't happen. Uh, so we can carry on with the game, which is good for the show today, I think. Um, then we do British resources. So Fred will gain resources equal to British controlled population plus the value of each unsabotaged DC. So not this tin mine one, but the seven rubber plantations. So six plus your control there, you'll gain in resources. Um, which... So everything that I have at control, right? Uh, yeah. Six, seven, nine. Uh, That's pretty good. Fourteen. So that puts me at sixteen. Uh, yeah, which is enough to gain to full resources. Yeah, up to twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. And then I gain two resources for each of my bases, which is just two. So I go up to five. Um, but yeah, I at least built that one new base, which is good. And then we have the support round. So Fred first may pacify in up to two spaces with control, police, and troops. Again, just doing one shift and paying first to remove terror. Uh, and I'm yeah. going to do it in Johore. Oh, I need to remove the terror first. Yeah, so it's quite expensive, actually. That's going to cost me six just for jewelry. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? What do you think, American friend? Um, right now, your American friend is just really busy in Korea. So um, I'm going to leave that to the British to figure that one out. In fact, your Amer or actually your American friend is also getting really red in the face yelling at the French that, hey, you should actually give um, the Vietnamese autonomy so that they will fight communists better. So I'm really busy right now. I can't help you, unfortunately. <laughs> That doesn't help at all. And when will I do the new uh, the new event after that, right? Uh, the campaign event will draw after we finish the propaganda round. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That would take me two trains to actually flip back. Yeah. So now you could just set it to neutral. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
that's the thing. I could set it to neutral, then wait for a train that I might do anyway. Will I do a train, though? I have I guess, a lot of boots yeah. on the ground. So Probably not. Your American friend will quickly mention that Briggs is about to be the British commander, which might help you deal with um, yep. opposition and all those British controlled spaces. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be able to resettle twice. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Well, is he gonna help me? Help me with opposition resettle? Yeah, because the, the new villagers block opposition, but but they will put opposition back down as well. Um, but you, you can just do a resettle, stick this down, and then ignore yeah, the opposition. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so maybe it's fine. Maybe I won't spend six for 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 that. I think it's too it's just too expensive. Yeah, I will, um, I think I will pacify on if I hold until then. I will pacify on on I will pacify on on propaganda three. Okay. Um, or two, yeah. So I then can agitate similarly in spaces with MTP pieces, and I will just do one in Tringanu because I may as well do, I think. Although I don't have many resources. Then, British redeploy, you need to move troops in ECs or provinces with MTP control to Kuala Lumpur or British control provinces, but there are none of those, so you don't need to retreat, basically. And then you may move police to any ECs, Kuala Lumpur or British control provinces, so you can reshuffle your police around. I can reshuffle my police around. Do I want to do that? Probably not. Oh, actually, I could. Um, if I put police in Pahang, that could be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, because then I could actually pacify there. Uh, because I need, I, I do need troop and police, right? Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah. Um, so the ones in Keda, um, do I move all of them? Or actually, I have two extra in Perak that I don't really need. Mm -hmm. I can place them here. Uh, okay. That should be enough. And then the tr when if I move the troops, they go back to Kuala Lumpur, right? Uh, you can't move them. They stay there. They've got okay. proper bases yeah. and things. Yeah. And that's fine They're because I'm happy with them being in the center yeah. of Mal Malaysia. Yeah, I mean, this is a good place to be. They've got access yeah. to basically every space. Especially um, one space in Patir Girder that I am really yeah. keen on. Cool. Then Entry. we will... So we're doing the reset now. So we remove all these um, and the sabotage and my crews left underground. And then you get to, so this is when the commander shifts on now. So Gunny actually was killed historically, but in this case, he's just stepped down and his temporary replacement, Briggs, is in place. He was uh, implementing the Briggs plan, which is a major resettlement plan. Um, good. Then, Fred, there's two campaign things you need to do now before we continue. First, yep. you need to set a colonial policy. So how lucky are you feeling? Um, take, yeah. Um, let me think about that. I think that... I'm not going for concessions. I know that I should have done it last time and I didn't, and I might regret the decision. I'm thinking between stay the course and stay at zero, uh, and that would be fine. I would be happy with that if I do a, a proper exit, uh, hoping that I don't get a scuttle, uh, even though I am in a scuttle position right now. Uh, yeah. Stand firm is greedy. There is no way I'm putting that one out. Uh, I don't think so. I think I'm going to... I hope it doesn't backfire. <laughs> we'll see yeah. about that. I'm going to stay the course. I, so I'd say, judging by the current uh, political will, that, that makes sense. You know, it's, it's in the middle there, and the general arc of this is that MCP gets weaker after the first campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I yeah. hope to. That's the thing. I'm I'm aiming for an exit. Uh, but then again, if I if I'm aiming for an exit, I should go for for stand firm. But I don't want to take the risk of there is a good chance of yeah. scuttle, and I don't want to have the minus three. So, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, and that's why it's kind of a tough choice, right? Because if you were really sure about it, you could go for that. But it would be a gamble. So now you draw a campaign card. Yeah. A new card. Hope it's not too bad. And mm -hmm. uh, British may represent in one space, then MCP extort in two spaces. Oh. Uh, hmm. Where do I want to do that? It's okay. It's not bad for you, I don't think. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, we've seen worse. But that's the no, thing. That's... I'm a bit worried for Kenya because it means that. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. We're going to change deck afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah so, this is the early, the early campaign deck. Perhaps so Stephen could say a little about the context of that particular yeah. campaign. So this event, Gangsters, Thugs, and Bandits, is the idea that essentially the British and almost all these campaigns would label their political opponents, i.e. the MCP or the Ergen, as you know criminals, um, and essentially to delegitimize the opposition to deny that they have genuine political grievances, and also, just as importantly, to justify why they are targeting the civilian population with such harsh measures. 
because if you're a community that supports criminals, then you're essentially why would you deserve proper you know protection that a citizen would? And um, that's so that's what the British reprisal here is doing. And then the second half of the event here is to acknowledge the fact that in some sense the insurgents made the British job kind of e easy to delegitimize them because they did engage in what would be seen as traditional criminal repertoires. So actually in Malay Malaysia, there was this, um, the MCP imp implemented an extortion tribute system that looked very similar to a bandit tribute systems on the Thai um, Malaya border, particularly, I uh, even sent a link to this to Fred, uh, somewhat like just the Robin Hood, there was actually pretty active banditry on that border in places like Kedah or Kelantan. So mm -hmm. Joe, when he extorts in Kelantan, the, the communities there might not actually see much difference between that and what bandits were doing during World War II or the decades before World War II. Yeah. And this is actually Leon Bacardus, uh, Chin Peng, the head of the MCP this time. Yes. Uh, so, wait. Fred, I think there's only one sensible reprisal target for you, really. Uh, yeah. I don't think there are any, actually. I think there's only you one do, people. Oh, you did your whole, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry, I just... Uh, uh, well, he could reprise one for Hang, technically. It would just... Or well, correct, even. Yeah. It would just be a mistake. Would, would, would I do that? Uh, so... We've, we've taken the um, Mark Herman approach of letting people do what they want within the rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that I wouldn't benefit from the... I wouldn't benefit from the... Um, I wouldn't benefit from the moving the, uh, the thing adjacent, but it's probably the best thing that I can... No, well, best thing is maybe uh, enough. It would still remove the that. opposition. Yeah, but it would remove the opposition and put it to neutral. Yeah, and then I'll go ahead and extort in two spaces, which is all I can do. I could actually extort here, but um, I don't think I need to. Hmm. Maybe I will. Actually, I'll no, because then he would be able to. Yep. That would be stupid. Okay, so that's done, and then we can continue with the second campaign. Okay. Yep. Um, and Fred is really pushing into just a couple of spaces now, which is not good. Here we go. As Stephen was talking about, the Korean War, which Fred can't use to full effect because he has enough resources. Oh, maxed um, out on money. I'm yeah. loaded. Yeah. It, I had two of those yeah. events that are like improving my resources for nothing. I'm a bit sad. Yeah. Well, I think I need to rally before he starts putting new villages everywhere. Um, so I'll put one, two, and um, it's, it's one rally. Um, one in Kedar, one in Ugisambalan, and one in Jakor. So that'll be four resources total. So it puts you down to two. And I really just can't afford to do any more than that. So that will be it. And then I will, I, uh, I just have to extort again. I would like, so my other option now would be to intimidate and remove police, mm -hmm. which would be good. Um, it would actually, hmm. actually, uh, he can still train. So it would remove his control in these, which would make it harder for him to resettle. But as Stephen said a few times, he can still just train there. So I think I really just need to extort and get some more resources back. There we go. Doing some banditry along that border. Hmm. Quatre. I just need to check something. Combien il faut pour ces cons? I think Fred might have this one soon. Not feeling yeah. he's busted now. In a bad spot. Uh, P might be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. We'll see. There's always a correct hammer. The yeah, or Baton Kali. Baton Kali would help you quite a bit. It would. Which, if that Think... event comes up, I'll explain what that is. What I can probably do is a limited up uh, to do a limited um, a limited sweep. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I think I'm going to clean Kelantan. So that's four. Let me flip those two. So that just costs you two resources and yep. it doesn't change control yet. So you're leaving these cards behind. Okay, yep. cool. So that's just I'll leave your resources down to. There we go. Yep. Okay. Uh, good. Oh, so a capability here with some. Uh, British, British sweep troops. activates one yeah. guerrilla troop in jungle spaces. I don't need that capability. What I need to do is. So um, Fred's, Fred's good at not getting distracted by these. Uh, I need to do some murder. Uh, yeah. hmm. A little hmm. late for a capability like that. It's not one of the best ones. It is useful because Malaya is basically entirely covered by jungle. So um, it does help with activating gorillas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reprisal um, in uh, Kelantan. So hmm. I'm going to place a marker here. I'm going to put 
Oh yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put him here. Yes. Um, I'm going to put him here. Uh, so he's uh, and now I'm going to do the assault. Yeah, you should set this to neutral as well. Right? So yeah, this yeah. one is going to neutral. Uh, this uh, is now in my control because nice. oh, no, it no, will get some control. So yeah, it's so under control. That's, that's enough to gain political will. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'm going to do assault here and here, and this dies. Yep. And all this dies. You gain one more for the base. And one more for the base. So you probably chase Chen Peng off into Thailand for now. And you have control. Uh, and that cost me four resources. So I was at 18. That puts me down to 14. Yep, that's right. And what? And that's a full. Oh, and that was yeah, up yeah. an SA. Yeah, so this capability mm -hmm. really isn't useful for me at this point. You're in a, yeah, Joe's in a good position here. He could do, He could turn things around this turn. Yeah, says that. Um, I could, yeah, let me think. Mm, it would leave you a little exposed, that. but that's okay. It would, yeah, I'm thinking about what I could do. There's two things I could do, both of which are good. I think I will, so I'll do a limited up and I'll match this ruin mm, to here. That's yeah. what I was thinking. <laughs> yep. Yep. Right, the other, yeah, a little poor. <laughs> Yeah, Third the other point. possibility was to send one here to Terra, but yeah. he could just reprise it again, basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to cripple the British economy now. Okay. Oh, and there's my MLA capability, which is also pretty nice, actually. Because one other way I can remove political will is by removing British troops, but normally they get protected by their human shields, their uh, indigenous police first. Um, but this lets me attack them directly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, I need to do something different, sadly. Can't take that. So I'll do um, nothing special. Um, and I'll do the two free sabotages here. So if I make it through this round, Fred will have very little money, which is good. Um, and I'll do. No, I, so I could tear in Jehovah, but I think actually I should just save my money there. Uh, what I'll do instead, so that's sabotage, sabotage, and then I'll intimidate, uh, sorry, terror, terror, then I'll intimidate twice. So I can intimidate in Kedar, and I can intimidate in Johor to remove two police cubes. Um, that puts Kedar to uncontrolled. There we go. Good. Give Fred something to think about. Uh, yeah, but this is done, so I don't need to think about anything anymore. Uh, okay. So I think I'm going to use the same old trick, uh, and I'm going to end up uh, cleaning up the north. I'm going to do a limited sweep. This is the trade-off to this approach. Fred is quite single-minded about these things sometimes. Yep. Uh, yep. So that goes British control, then he gains another political world back. Yep. Yep. He's one for a very kinetic approach to this. Just eliminate did the uh, Did you lower his resources? No. Uh, no, I need to lower it. Yep. And you go to next event. I'm used to not having any resources, so... Yeah, so here's uh, Gurney killed, which in this case would be Briggs killed. In fact, yeah. and it would have removed his commander ability until reset. Uh, Place one police. Uh, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. The question is hmm. I'm actually considering just doing a limited up. Mm -hmm. But is yeah, that, that makes sense. is that greedy? Joe's pretty poor. I I'm pretty poor. I think that's very reasonable, actually. And I'm um, going to be poor next round. So actually, me doing this is probably for the best. Shouldn't I have left like maybe uh, one unit in the back? Or I know, I actually, I don't care. I mean, maybe, but you didn't. So that's that's it. Yeah. Uh, so this, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just going to do a limited. You can tell that Joe's a little bit on the back ropes because he's, know, he's yeah. not letting. Uh, he's using. If you take your hand off the piece, then you're done. Um, yeah. Rules. It's cost me two. And that gives me one political will. Yep. Yep. Um, good. Then, That's then, good actually, because if, if you hadn't, if you'd done a full turn, are you thinking of doing full turns still? Yeah, I'm still doing thinking. Okay, of doing I won't. I won't say where you shouldn't then. I'll because let you think about it. I'm. I'm thinking about. I'm. I'm worried about Johor that could be flipped back to opposition with that thing, and I'm wondering mm -hmm. if I should do the. The problem is that if I do a reprisal, I'm moving it. No, it'll just be at neutral. It'll just bump a guy somewhere. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is that I'm bumping it um, hidden, so I cannot do much with it. Yeah. Um, so if I do this assault, 
I, I can still do the airstrike, so I could do the full turn and just do. Uh... There's no one you could target actually. Yeah. You need spotters in this, like mm -hmm. in Fire and Lake. Oh yeah, yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, they. Uh, I thought that I could. I could target one of those. Yeah, they are. They're hidden, so they couldn't be targets. Yeah. Um, and you, you also can't target your own uh, economic industries. Mm -hmm. Airstrike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a bit annoying. I mean, that would be insane. What kind of government faction would you be able to target your own cities with? And what coin game would you be able to do that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and on a combien de cartes? This. Set. Three. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh, I'm more worried I would get no money. Then I could actually do a reprisal in Tranganu, though. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad the um, game is it's making Fred good. think this much. I'm not sure it's good for the stream, but, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's good that you're uh, pondering over this. I guess I'm the one that's supposed to be filling the air, though. So it's yeah. really well, there's not much. I was thinking about this event. There's not, much, there's not that much interesting to say. I mean, it's a nice little dramatic story of Gurney going along and uh, comboing being ambushed. But, I will, I will yeah. say that the MCP that ambushed and killed Gurney thought that they were just ambushing you know kind of standard police convoy just to get arms and then the mcp is like oh look we accidentally killed the top british commander yeah. of the whole thing and i think also, he yeah go on. sorry i was just gonna say that gurney also in part got killed because he got out of the car and then just stood up outside um and part of the re the argument there is he was trying to like direct fire away from his wife who was also in the car with him um which is probably the right thing to do but you know uh they pretty quickly uh caught most of the mcp that yeah. did it I, so I, I think also he uh, was attacked in very similar circumstances in Palestine, uh, I believe, by Agano Leahy. Um, I think there was an attack on one of his convoys, or a planned one, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I can't remember I that. I can't remember that. Yeah. yeah. And, there is, and there is no way for me to remove, uh, to re to remove um, uh, sabotage, right? Um, uh, no, yeah, maybe an event, but I'm not even sure about that. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I, then then I would just do that. I would just do my okay. uh, my limited up. Cool. I think so. The reason you should have done that in this good is I would otherwise have used this event to put a grower in Kuala Lumpur and then Terra, uh, mm. which would be bad for you. But in this case, I cannot do that, so I won't bother cancelling the effect. And I think I'll just take a full turn, and I really need to get some pieces back on the board. So mm. I'll rally uh, one here, which will give me control. Lower this again. Um, and the same into Kalantan. Pretty good. So, bouncing back. Um, and then, so I've only got two resources left, but we've only got left, three cards maximum left, which is not so bad. So, I could actually just intimidate again. Just try and keep him back, but. but um, there. Yeah, I'll just stick to bat actually, and then I'll intimidate again in Jahor and in Kira to remove police. Okay, done. Hmm. And I don't activate when I intimidate, which is the, hmm. the benefit there. Okay. Oh, melee police. So you can just put them back down if you want. Yeah. Yeah. And you may want to, because the bottom option is quite unpleasant. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, the thing that I'm a bit uh, a bit worried about, and I think and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do that. We'll, we'll go uh, troops on the wrong side of the island as well. It's not even an island. With no so. bases. Will Joe yeah. even get any money in the next propaganda? Of course he will not. So yeah, this is I'm the not. classic yeah. Joe problem. But, okay, so this is I'm bad at putting bases down. I'm bad at long term planning. Bad at centralized command structures. But I did I did do that this time, and it was a mistake, wasn't it? It went yeah. all horribly wrong. I think we t he and I talked about this, that it can sometimes be useful if you, um, in the first propaganda round, put a base or even maybe two in Thailand, which is kind of historically what the MCP did, because it's not going to help you rally, but the British can't get at it. And so it'll yeah. guarantee you that for the next two prop rounds that you'll get the um, two resources in case yeah. you need that little bump after you realize you don't have any bases left in um, yeah. Um, in Joe's defense, Fred always plays a very kinetic style because he's just, you know, a Versailles player at heart. So it's because um, he's French. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, he's so, yeah. I give him this game on Malaya, and he plays it like the French won Indochina. I mean, it's just like yeah. you've got but a with here success. landing up in uh, Kelantan trying to create an aero base. Um, yeah. yeah. Look at this. 
<laughs> so what can I do? Uh, I can't take the event, but I could take another full turn. And I may even... Do... Oh, uh, I was going to... So I was actually planning to ambush his uh, Troopter, um, but Fred's cunningly protected them with uh, melee police. So I can't do that. Um, but we're quite close potentially to propaganda round, so I think I'm just going to have to go for it. So I'll do two... Oh, very poor. Steven, I'm very poor. Um, maybe I should rally and put base down instead. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that instead. I'll do a limited rally. In, build bases you know. and border sanctuaries. I think we figured out why. Yeah, but okay, okay, okay. But about the silent strategy, unless you get pushed there with uh, yeah. reprisal, which happens sometimes, it takes a lot of effort to do that. You need to, yes. to build, move yeah. a bunch of these guys from Kalantan and basically <laughs> abandon yeah. it completely. In Joe's defense, I thought for sure when Fred was doing his big brutal sweep in Kalantan, he was going to knock a guy to Thailand, and he's just like, "Nope, you're not going to escape nice. me." He knocked him down at the bang, just so he shot him instead. Yeah, somewhere else. Just chased him into a trap down there. Fred is yeah. pretty pretty merciless. Uh, okay, so there's another another one, and this is interesting. So this is actually oh, connecting to a previous game. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh yeah, so I should actually describe it. The the unshaded is yeah. very good, which is why I got distracted for Joe. Sorry, the shaded. Um, but these are yep. so in Palestine when the war breaks out, like I said, they both kind of stumbled into each other. The British didn't have enough police. And they um, and so what they did is that they brought in these um, Palestine police that are now lost their job because they've lost Palestine. And so these guys who know no can't speak the language at all, certainly don't know any Chinese are brought in to essentially just patrol around. And so they. Um, were a force multiplier, but they also were like pretty brutal and they were criticized for a bit, essentially being these um, kind of disorderly and rough guys. And so they were eventually phased out pretty quickly. But yeah, that's a nice continuation from Palestine alongside yep. Gurney. Yep. Uh, so I will indeed um, take the shade. Although, well, it was a little tempting to rally and then extort and then rally again to stop Fred taking a full turn. But I think in this case, it's not so important. So I'll do. Um, Two free rallies, so I can rally in Kalantan and I can rally in Kedah, and then I can shift Kalantan to opposition. Uh, you could put three in Kedah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a base and two population. Oh, yeah, base plus prop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And some of the police in Palestine were coming from Northern Ireland as well. Weren't they? Yeah, so uh, there's this weird or, yeah, like, uh, continuity where you get black and tans that are sent to Palestine in the 20s. And then they were perceived to be as bad as disorderly as they were in Ireland. And so they're really kind of phased out by the time the um, Palestine game would have begun. But then some of the police from Palestine who are perceived to be disorderly are sent to Malaya. And yeah, it kind of continues like that. I will also say that King's African Rifles unit is actually in Malaya, which we'll see them again in, potentially in Kenya. So there is some you know continuity across these campaigns. Uh, I think there's even... There might have been at one point a campaign event related to that, but I think we might have taken it out. Uh, there is one. Yeah, there is. Uh, the, the Lessons Learned oh, one, yeah. uh, has got a, an, an image of the King's African Rifles in Malaya. Yeah. So, yeah, Fred did exactly. Very predictable when you do that. Um, okay, fine. You got to switch. The oh, are you doing limited? So, Fred, there's 50% chance the next one's propaganda. Oh, but, yeah, that's true. Um, but you may want to do it anyway. It's up to you. Um, yeah, I actually, yeah. I'm fine with uh, with taking the lead for the next one. Uh, yeah. I think it's, yeah, I think it's, uh, we'll see what. Let's I'm just check you won't lose instantly. Um, four, five, six, seven, well, eight. You, yeah, nine, you got to give him two for Kwantan. Yeah. And that's oh, yeah, because he's got that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got minus 10 and you've got plus five. So that's only net five. So yeah, you're, you're safe. That's fine. Yeah, so it puts um, me at six. That's not a lot. But, yeah, I'm uh, just yeah. trying to avoid your embarrassment again. OK. Um, uh, yeah, there's an important question from Stuart. And the answer is absolutely yes. Correct. OK, yeah. We should well, put that on as the theme tune, in fact. Yeah, um, yeah let's just say that, again, if the British race sells well, I might have something better for you to play while you sing that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a really nice capability for me, um, actually. If mm -hmm. which would help me get some money back, and I may even need to take it. Yeah, what Fred does now. I think it, it helps Joe, <laughs> Joe extort all of his money <laughs> rather than having to rely on uh, bases. So it's his favorite card in the game. Okay. Yes. Uh, so then I have the chance of doing the thing that I wanted to do. So I'm going to do a full turn. Yeah, this is pretty I'm rough. I'm going to resettle twice. 
Uh, so I'm going to resettle in Kelahan and I'm going to resettle in Gris and Bilan. And this is the advantage of a resettling population that already hit you, so it can't get any worse. Uh, yeah, and they, yeah, that's the thing. It's the same in uh, Jest of Robin Hood. I always, mm -hmm. yeah, do assaults in population, yeah, in spaces where people hate me already. So that's good. Uh, and now I need to train. Mm -hmm. And I will train indeed. And that will enable me to place the rest of my troops. So we'll train in Kuala Lumpur. And the best thing about this, if you find that you really enjoy resettling people that already hate you, then uh, pre-order Sovereign of Discord, where the, <laughs> you can once again resettle people that probably already hate you. Yeah. Fred, keep um, in mind you're going to have much less money next campaign. Oh. Yeah, but I'm play I'm still placing the the police sure. in Kenan. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're in a pretty good position now. Okay. I think is that the end of your turn? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is the one I think I just have to do a turn. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, you yeah. know what? Um No, no, I didn't say anything. You yeah, you're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I could take this event, but um I, I'll deal with that later. Mm -hmm. There's more important things right now. So I can do one final terror in Johor, which will at least help a little bit so. I, I can't yeah. see because Stuart's comment is, is in the way is okay. do you have any money me he's at I zero have, i had one i had one now i had one and now i have zero. Oh, okay yeah so, yeah yeah, yeah so I, think I, saved, I, made... I saved one with that um rally thing so yeah. fred was yeah no i think i made a, a mistake i should probably have resettled in johor mm -hmm. and actually pacify oh yeah i see yeah yeah but it doesn't uh, matter yeah. and, and yeah. money would have been tight uh yeah, yeah. No, I, I see the idea there. Yeah, could have been nice. okay. Uh, propaganda. Okay, so, so maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. fill him in on the victory conditions when we get to the propaganda. Oh well, Jesus, <laughs> it's right here. Yeah, so, I just read. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what on what we're checking now? You mean? Yeah, because maybe you could. Was just... Someone asking. Oh yeah. So yeah, great. Um, yeah, yeah. So in this, so the overall the overall thing is that I'm trying to drag this down to two or less, and Fred's trying to get it 18 or higher. Um, the things that shift it, so we can actually look at the bottom of here. So what we're checking now during propaganda rounds, Fred, can you get the propaganda round sheet? Yep. Uh, yeah. So what we're checking now, if you look right at the bottom of this, is we're checking um, a comparison of support and opposition, but ignoring opposition where there's new villages, because they can't cause any trouble. And uh, I'm also subtracting one political will for each uh, sabotage or terror in Kuala Lumpur and the economic centers, which is basically more like attacks actually on the white settler population rather than just on the indigenous population. Is that right, Stephen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which then, yeah, causes trouble for the British. So that's what we're checking during propaganda rounds, and we're about to do that now. But there's other things we can do, sorry, during the, yeah, there's other things we can do while we're playing. So uh, Fred's been doing this a lot. He can remove my bases and remove my control, which gains him back political will, and then some events. I can gain control of spaces, and uh, I can also remove, if I manage to remove troops with attack, which I haven't done any of yet, because Fred's been very careful to protect them, um, I, I can take off political will as well. So yeah, right now we'll check the opposition, but I'm gonna, so I'll put these new villages slightly on top of the opposition markets, which I find personally kind of helpful. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't in the rules strictly. So one, two, three, four, five, six opposition versus just five support, so that's only minus one. And then minus two more for these. So that's minus three total. So very tight. We're right back on eight again. Really just kind of seesawing around that. Um, so nobody wins yet. Then Fred gets uh, just the control population. So just kind of normal taxation rather than exports for his income because I sabotaged all of his industries. So that puts me at uh, 17. Yeah, it's good still. And I just get two for this base and cut off, which is not much. And then Fred can do some pacifying if he wishes. Um, uh, actually, oh, and I need troops and police to pacify. Yeah, so you could do one in Pahang fairly cheaply. but and I mean, one advantage of that is I wouldn't put a rally there either. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I could do Pahang. Uh... So there's a couple of questions we could answer while you're doing that. Can you maybe stick this first one up here? Yeah. Um, yeah. The different religious leanings of different areas form a consideration for either side in the game. I don't really think it was uh, religious as much as it, as it was ethnic. And I think you also, so this is a thing that I had to carefully balance with some of these games is that I think you have to be a little careful with creating like kind of really fixed ethnic categories because of course ethnicity is constructed. And um, generally speaking, 
um, the Malay majority was recruited into the British police and also they saw the British as essentially their path to independence and they didn't feel like they needed to support them. And that it was specifically not just Chinese, but Chinese squatters who felt kind of like outside of the political system who were supporting the MCP and had supported them during World War II. And there was attempts by the MCP to gain Malay support, but the British, like for instance, they formed a Malay regiment and the British just smashed that thing hard really early in the war because they didn't want any idea of that happening. Um, and so that's, you know, it's partially from British actions about why the MCP couldn't build a broader base of support. And so I think that that, and so you're going to see ethnicity come up again and basically almost all the um, games with, because you have the, even though it's not emphasized, the, of course, the Jewish resistance groups are kind of um, trying to create an independent Jewish state and there's going to be ethnic cleansing after the Palestine game ended. And then in Kenya, you're going to see kind of inter- fighting among the Kikuyu ethnic group majority, which is the main support base of the uh, Mau Mau. And then in the last game, when we get all the way to February in Cyprus, you're going to see um, a, a, there's quite a bit of ethnic tension between the Turkish minority on Cyprus and then the Greek majority, who is more, you know, generally speaking, supporting uh, Ioka, the insurgent organization. All right, I think we have got more questions. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we so have I, a question I, from from Sav about the the connections, yeah. the interconnections between the four different games. So, I, so I, I'm just I'm just yeah. doing a cleanup while we do this. And Fred, you yeah. could redeploy your police, which is the only thing left to do while Stephen talks. Yeah. So I think I tried um, to include this a little bit, and I think that there are a few others in the other um, some of the other games, but um, generally those the connections are going to come through in the uh, campaign events because I you know one thing I wanted to do, and this is I'm teasing some of my philosophy for the next multi-pack is that um, I want each of these games to be self-contained and also to really be about the people of that topic. And then the campaign is where you start are really trying to emphasize the interconnections uh, and also the cross-comparative aspects. So there's cross-comparative, for instance, historical articles in the multi-packs campaign booklet. So rather than like in some GMT games having an, a, like a background history of the game the single conflict you're going to play you, you have like a, essentially a comparative article about look let's compare all the different insurgent groups across the multi-pack and like what made them similar and different things like that okay cool and then we have one final question fred uh, about the victory systems which yeah might be good yeah. So and just I want yeah. before you answer that question, yeah. if there are more questions generally about the multi-pack, about the historical context of it, and a bit more information about the design philosophy that Stephen was uh, mentioning, and I am pretty sure this time I didn't forget, I added the link in the description. You can actually go back to the interview I did with Stephen when his game was originally added to P500. Uh, it's a pretty lengthy video where we talk about a lot about the history, a bit more in detail in each of the games. The thing that you won't have in this video is all the new artwork that you see here, which is the final artwork in this uh, in this campaign series. But all of the historical context and the and the and the design philosophy is 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 in there. I really recommend watching this. Um, and Stephen, I, I remember that back then you actually made a presentation uh, to actually go through that, and that was super 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 interesting. So. If, if people have interest in that topic, they should definitely and go go and watch this. But I, I will let you answer that question, sorry. Yeah, so just really quickly to answer. So yeah, so all the multi-packs use a variant of this idea of the political will system where, so rather than in your class, since you do coin videos, it sounds like, in a lot of coin games, you have this plus this. So opposition plus bases in the multiplayer ones. But um, as I explained many times before, essentially we've shifted to a scale where it's kind of a zero sum British political will track. And all of them have various different conditions for how you're going to increase and decrease that but generally speaking there's always going to be some that happen during the campaign as joe outlined for you and then there's going to be some that happen during the propaganda and usually the spread between those is that the ones during the campaign are more like immediate military effects and the ones at the propaganda are kind of more of your like long-term kind of political comparisons where essentially you're having the british government or colonial government saying like, how, how is the war actually going? And if they see that there's way more opposition than support, they're like, oh, my God, we're going to need to negotiate with these people, um, which is why that, you know, that only comes up periodically, whereas, you know, they're not every single month or so ever being able to detect exactly the overall political leanings of the countryside. Cool. Great. Uh, one last thing before we start, I need to draw the new uh, okay. campaign card. Yeah. That's right. Um, and let's hope it's and you're you're stuck on your on your policy now. That can't be changed, even though you're yeah. probably in a winning position. So yeah, cool. In 
Oh my gosh, we didn't get a single colonial um, uh, crisis card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. None of the other crises in the globe have come up, which is good for you, Fred. I would say. And in that case, do the new village uh, are taken into account for... for yeah, this so this one's interesting, yeah. These these UN inspectors uh, who never did come to Malaya but are not going to be fooled by the new villages. Um, so that could actually work in my favor, which is quite interesting. Even so if I can... lose this, I might gain some uh, prestige loss. Yeah. So you should get, uh, because I'm at uh, five, six, uh, and you're way, way beyond that, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, we'll see. Yeah. This. so yeah. you may take a small hit from it anyway, which is interesting. Um, oh, okay. So I just need. Oh, but I still have time to actually fix it. You do, yeah. This is at the end of the next at the next uh, political world place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. so when you guys finish, I, it would be yeah. great if you could show that yes, these yeah, other colonies are going to yeah. come up because it was just very unlucky that we didn't get a single. Yeah. Of, um, we we could do that now. In fact, I, I'm not sure what would be. Best maybe we can do it at the end of the yeah. at yeah, the end sure. of the game when sure. we actually um, update the end of Empire campaign board. We can actually yeah. look through the event that we didn't see for that first half of the of the war. Mm -hmm. So so one thing I forgot as well is we move on to Templar now. So mm -hmm. Templar. So you um, can Thank do you. pacify in two spaces with nice. trains, which is good. And yeah, you're in a pretty strong position. So for a combination of support and new villages, you've kind of locked me out of uh, mm -hmm. all of these and kind of split me into these just four kind of remnant sectors here. And, and there's not even anyone in Tangany, so yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Leaflets. British just love dropping things from planes. People. And one space right. MCP I think there's a question from Alan. So oh, what yeah. you guys do? Um... Oh, and Alan is here. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice to see you, yeah. Alan. So to answer Alan's question, there are so there's an event actually in Malaya that references the change of the Labour government to the uh, Churchill Conservative government, and it can you know affect. So that's kind of a specific to Malaya. And there's also some events, um, for instance, Macmillan replacing um, Eden because of the Suez crisis uh, in Cyprus. But in terms, I think there might even be one for the campaign the conservative government um, in the late war, which we might see when they play Kenya and Cyprus. But generally um, speaking, you're not going to see what you're kind of alluding to here, which is that political will is so bad that it's going to cause a collapse of the British government back in the UK. And that's because like most of these wars are on such a small scale that they're not having domestic political effects to the same degree that the United States war and um, Vietnam would have, or for instance, even just the Suez crisis which was much more of a, like a major debacle um, for the conservative government at the time. Cool. Uh, so I'm so poor that I'm actually just going to have to take this event. So Fred's leafleting campaign fails, and that means there were actually all along two more gorillas down here in Jokor. There we go. That's how I interpret that event anyway. Mm -hmm. It's one of those kind of coin abstractions where... Yeah, uh, I mean, what that kind of represents is you can imagine that there are MCP pieces that are kind of like right on the line whether they're going to defect yeah. or not. And one of the things that the historian call hack notes is that the British used some leaflets that were just like, we're going to come kill you. <laughs> and like, obviously people didn't surrender when they were using those types of leaflets. It's really the ones where they're like, oh, your life would be so much better if you surrendered to the British yeah. and we'll give you this payout. And then yeah. lo and behold, those leaflets looked, <laughs> worked a little better than the ones that like were coming to kill you. <laughs> and and Fred, you know, Fred's express behavior has been more on the coming to kill me line so far. Yes, so, exactly. Uh, so no yeah. one believes Fred's leaflets. <laughs> and I don't know why. Um, now, now I'm I'm really in a pacifying mood. Uh, I must say, that's the the kind of person I am. Um, the thing is, how many cars are left? Okay, so I have. Just need two more. Uh... Oh, you're trying to avoid the. So, so you you're actually just assuming you're going to win now. And you're trying to avoid the prestige loss from the UN. Yeah, that's what I. I'm not assuming I'm going to win. I'm just trying. I'm just trying yeah. to win. I just want to. So if I'm if if we're at ten, do I? Is it considered a win for for the British yeah. or yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And Stephen, does does this UN uh, campaign event? Um, because they, they weren't that interested really in Malaya, but it's, it's the idea that potentially, if you know, there's clearly quite a lot of popular opposition, it would just be a bit embarrassing for the British, basically. Yeah, that's the basic idea. And, and, the, and so if you're thinking of like, what does it mean to have these, why don't the new villages affect the UN? I would think of it less as like a UN inspection team, which they did a lot less of in the early 1950s, and more of like 
everyone's in squalid camps <laughs> and that's being reported on and it doesn't make you look good if the question of like british kind of colonialism or something comes up at the un or you know the european human rights convention which they're just about to sign in the early 1950s yeah okay now i can uh, only resettle in one space yep yeah, Briggs is being replaced by a tempo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, boom, boom, boom. The thing is that a train for me is not going to help me that much at this point. So you don't actually need to pay for any trains. You could just pacify if you wanted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, know, you do have to select it as your operation, but yeah, yeah. you don't have to pay for the space. Yeah. But, but, yeah, but the problem is that there don't really have any good space for, for pacifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not true. yet. Yeah. Um, not in Johore, where I would. I'm actually keen on placing a village there, a new village there, because I I don't want to go through the problem of of having to pacify this. Um, I would want to do it in Kelantan, but the problem is that Kelantan, I have a few problems there <laughs> before I can yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that I need to. And yeah. The, the the combo train plus villages is something that I would have to wait for. Um, mm -hmm. I cannot do now. Um, I need to remove those guys before before being able to do anything. Yeah. So when you sweep there, you do get to use the police already in space in place yeah. to yeah. to put them. Although that doesn't matter too much in this case. No, that doesn't matter too much. And that's the thing is that I I now I have a over concentration of force here, and I would need more troops actually in Perak than more than anything. Um, so I'm tempted to do a limited up, but if I do this, I'm gonna, not going to be able to move from Kelantan to Perak. Yep. Uh, I made a bit of a pickle here. And I have 15. 15, si je fais ça, ça fait 4. 6, donc ça me fait 9. Et du coup, avec les sweeps, qu'est-ce que je peux faire? Avec les sweeps. C'est chiant. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. Ugh. Ugh. That's very annoying. Um, hmm. Yeah, so, so I'm going to do a full turn. Uh, I'm going to have two troops that are going to move here to do... So they're, yeah, they're moving through the sweep action. Mm -hmm. Then I'm sweeping in Kelantan here. Um, then I'm sweeping into uh, Johore, and I just need to check one thing when I'm going to do the assault. Uh, it's one per, yeah, one per troop, so I can sweep here. And then uh, it would only you need uh, you need two more cubes because it's jungle, but you can send oh. in two from you can send two from Pahang if you wanted. Yeah, but the problem is if I send in from Pahang, I leave Pahang empty. Yeah, Pahang's not really huge. Mm -hmm. Valuable space over there. But you can move from here to here. I can. I can. It costs me one resource to move in, and I have two resources. So. Yeah, true. Uh, OK, I'm going to move those troops yeah. uh, from Pahang. So that's one, two, three sweeps. Uh, so that puts me at nine. nine so you may run up. The other thing to mention, actually, just, just so you're aware of it, is if, if these are here with no police at the start of the propaganda round, they'll automatically do a sabotage with. Yeah, yeah, and I have a plan for that. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, I have a plan for that. And then the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do an airstrike, mm, I guess. Nice. Uh, yeah. I don't really have other things that I can do. I could do reprisal, though, but... Yeah. I don't see the purpose of doing a rep reprisal now. That would just hurt me more than anything. So I'm going to do a, a hair strike in Johor. Uh, uh, yeah, you can do one in Kelantan too. Oh, it's in up to two provinces. Yeah. yeah, great. Then I'm going to do one here, one here, and that's it for me. Because there was quite a lot of air support from the British, but more in a supporting role, wasn't it, rather than mm -hmm. these huge kind of US-style airstrikes. Um, yeah. Okay. And thanks, Thomas, for being here tonight. And yeah. Feel free. Thanks, so, Thomas. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember that there was uh, yeah the episode on Pakistan last month. So if you want to check this one out, it's quite different. Uh, and then we'll be back in January for Kenya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next carbon. Let's see what I can do. Here we go. So oh. as being oh, discussed, we're talking about this. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, the minus one political oil is good, but I actually don't want Briggs back in action really at all. So I won't take that. What will I do though? Fred is not giving me many good options, has to be said. Mm -hmm. 
So I, yeah, I could have tried to ambush, but if I try to attack here, I would need to roll a one or a two on a, on a d6, which is kind of useless. Um, I could do my sabotages to guarantee getting those in now before he does a garrison, which is at least minus two political will. That might be what I need to do. But it then just sets it up nicely for other stuff. Tricky. Um, Yeah. And if so, like in other coin series games, if I try to march into these support spaces, I'll, I'll flip active as well. That's something mm -hmm. worth people knowing, I guess. Hmm. Okay, I think what well, I'm going to do, actually. Yeah, not for Hank. Well, not necessarily. No, yeah, not, not for Hank currently. I could march into that, but it wouldn't achieve much at this point. Um, and I can't rally in support spaces either. So I'm actually going to do a limited rally in Kadar, I think. Which looks a bit desperate, but I think it's what I have to do at this point. I'm actually yeah. tempted to get the resource now. Mm -hmm. uh, because I might need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. And it would put you back onto Briggs as well, which is decent. Yep. Yeah. You're in a funny yeah. situation, actually, because if you took the resources, you might be better on Templar to spend mm -hmm. them on pacifying, but um, exactly. you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I might be happy to be able to uh, resettle uh, back to two That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So it's weird, but uh, I think that I'm I'm actually gonna take the event. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take the event, take the six resources, so that puts me back at fifteen. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but then again, don't do I, It's a May, right? I don't. You have, have to, no. You have to move it. You yeah. get uh, victory. Yeah, because so they. Have, you, you know what the government are like. They say we want change. Yeah. Do do something different. Don't care how, just different. Yeah. Okay, uh, Chinese quarters. Ooh, that is good. Two provinces. Yep, so I will take that event. Mm. And I can maybe at least start forcing Fred to think hard about what's happening here. Um, uh, it should probably be Pan, although I could get here. Mm. Let's go here, yeah, actually. Yep. Knowing, uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. I think I have to go for some slightly risky strategies yeah, now. Yeah, I Let's cannot let you. I cannot let you touch Perak. That's the problem. Uh, I think I need to do a limited sweep. Yep. Uh, and sweep in Perak. That's going to cost me two. Yep. And not move anyone in. No. Yeah, no. no. Okay. Actually, I could move. I could move before I see it. I could move. Uh, I don't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, one, two, six. Ah, putain, fait chier. I'm not sure if you flip the card <laughs> that, that you can change what you're going to do at all. Oh no, Fred hasn't seen it yet. So oh, he hasn't seen. Oh, that was you. No, no. Oh. I, I flipped it back really quickly before you. No, 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 I won't. I won't move anything. I it's thought it was Fred that flipped. I thought Fred no, saw no. the CCP one. He's like, you know what? I think I might do something yeah. else. Yeah, so this isn't this isn't uh, effects elsewhere in the British Empire, but it is effects elsewhere internationally, which is interesting. So, Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, minus three is yeah, I wouldn't get the full benefit of it, but I would put you really strongly into zero. Yeah. I can put you in. I cannot put you into into that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's interesting yeah. that that's never been done on the coin series. But really, if you get knocked below zero resources, you should have to remove gorillas. But you know, yeah, yeah. that's that's a bit fiddly. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I don't. I don't think that's that fiddly. Uh, and I would say that uh, you're the developer on a game you're that's seeing... called. You're you're oh. the developer, Joe, on a game that's called Baltic Empires that actually has exactly that mechanic. When you cannot pay off debt, yeah. you remove some of your. No, but it has a whole debt subsystem because it's set yeah, in the, uh, 16th century a, Europe. You could have a whole debt system debt. here. Yeah. People here are yeah. starving to death. That's a debt. <laughs> that's a debt system. Yeah. You guys are getting a window into what the development cycle is like. Is I propose something I think is somewhat clever, and Joe's like, I'm a bit fiddly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually not fiddly at all. It would be a perfectly sensible thing to do. Um, it would be very different to the rest of the series, though, in a way that might not uh, be useful. Yeah. Okay. Raise all kinds of questions, like, why isn't every other game like that? So now I'm going to assault here, here, uh, yeah. here. Oh, brutal. Big, big mistake. No, I don't think so. Uh, so that puts me at uh, sit. Yeah. yeah, the Churchill government came in there like, not enough assault. <laughs> you haven't been doing enough yeah. assault. <laughs> That's the only thing Fred's been doing. 
Fred, can uh, you can you loan me one resource? Um, I potentially could do that. Because uh, <laughs> you, you can afford to, because you've got one odd, odd resource which you can't use otherwise. Yeah, which I cannot use anyway. There's actually an event that would do this for you, Joe. That's but, true. Yeah. 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 And the thing with the yeah. assault is that I can do reprisal or airstrike, but I have no one to airstrike. Wait a minute. Did I kill the single unit somewhere? But you could just do a reprisal in Johor. Uh, I could do a reprisal in Johor. I could do a reprisal yeah. in Johor. That's a you killed a single unit in Perak, so you could take those resources back and airstrike instead if you want. Yeah, but then I if, don't I know why I'm doing the, if I yeah. do the reprisal in Johor, that means that I am pushing you back to. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Um, so I add a terror marker, and it goes to uh, neutral. Yes. Uh, and this I is can... very frustrating. Yes, yeah. here. Because what I really want is one resource so that I can march in here and attack you. So you got to put his gorilla somewhere, though. Uh, there wasn't one. He killed it, right? Oh, oh so he killed all of them there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, But I actually can achieve kind of what I want to do. So we're very close to the end. So I'm going to free rally in two spaces. So I can rally in Kada, put another bunch of gorillas down. This is getting a little bit desperate. We're... Because of the CCP victory, we're switching to the final stage of Maoist inter insurgency. We're marching on cities. Um, so in one of the space, rally, free rally in two spaces, but they have to be, yeah, OK. So I can stick one down in Johor. OK. Uh, cool. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Whew, that would be bad for me. Still pretty bad for me. Um, hmm. So much use. I have one resource left. I think I. So if I march here, that would get me three points. Mm -hmm. If I just send a huge army in there, if but I can get more points from doing other things and also block Fred from having a full time. So I'll do that. Mm -hmm. So I'll do one terror here and do my free sabotage with these, which I would get anyway, but Fred's smart enough that he might try to block it. Yeah, I was planning on doing a garrison to block okay. it, but yeah. So we'll see. Good. Then if you do that, um, hmm. I mean, he can technically do do his special activity, right? Which means he could extort. Oh yeah, I can extort. Yeah, or intimidate. Um, I need to extort, really, don't I? Because yeah. in case there's another turn, basically. So I'll extort just in Kedah. Actually, I might as well explore into Langor as well. Because mm -hmm. you'd have to sweep in anyway to do an airstrike. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually tempted to just take the take the event to place yeah. the new village in uh, Johor. Yeah. That's probably the best thing that I can do now. I will keep the initiative yeah. anyway. Um, okay. Placing two police uh, in HEC okay, is yeah. Never mind. probably useless. That makes sense to me. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, not uh, that I should be helping you. Yeah, I think it's, it's probably where they here that removes those two here. Yep. And then let's see. It might be a propaganda. May well be. It's oh, not. It's not. So we get right to the end. Um, ooh. Set one opposition space to neutral. Yes. Nice. And the event the event for me is not good because every <laughs> there's lots of opposition but you've got new villages left. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh so actually I could that could be the trade-off because if I take the event, I can put uh, Keda to neutral. Yep. I could put Keda to neutral. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to move it from Keda to Perak, and you're going to take back control. So that's going to kick me down three. Yep. Or instead, what I can do is move into Perak to prevent you from taking control. I'm not sure you can do that. Yeah, I don't think that, that will necessarily work. I've got nine. Yeah. You, you could that. garrison yeah. a whole bunch of troops into Parak. That okay, would yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can always move. I think troops move to one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and garrison to one space. Mm. It's kind of like a mini airlift option. Yeah. So wait a minute. In garrison, I have that. Yeah. Move any cubes either to any EC Kuala Lumpur and one province. Oh yeah. So I could actually garrison there. Yep. Uh, and and yeah, then I can do uh, yeah. The air strike would be useless, but it would be a air strike in uh, Johor, I guess. Um, yeah. 
it's not that's the that's, so. the that's the you know a bit of trade-off i have here because yeah. the event's no good for me at all is it because i would only yeah everywhere with mcp is already out of position so. yeah so taking the event is not like i'm preventing you from doing something good um yeah. Should two spaces with MCP, one each level towards a position, so no use for this. Should I garrison there? And the next one is a propaganda, so that's my last turn for yeah. sure. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, putain. Can he, yeah, he can garrison and resettle, can he? Uh, no, just train and resettle. Right. No, no, I can, yeah, garrison and either a strike or reprisal. We, we went around on that quite a bunch. Yeah. Testing. I think this was very cool. Mm -hmm. And wait a minute. Um, I have an idea. Oh, no, I need the British troops. Ah, oh, putain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because if I could reprisal in Tranganu, that would be perfect. But I cannot. I'm right, yeah, them. you need to send them somewhere else. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I need to send be... them in Perak. Oh, that would have yeah. been awesome because I could reprisal there, then reinforce Perak. Um, but I think I have no choice. I have to garrison. Um, I just don't want you to take a full turn. Uh, I want to force you yeah. to take a, a limited up. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to do reprisal and airstrike, uh, garrison and airstrike. So move any cube desired to any EC, Kuala Lumpur, and one, one province, then each EC. And I mean, I sort it, yeah. Do I care about this? So uh, this at this point, you don't anymore. If, so if I hadn't done the sabotage on an earlier turn... Yeah, and that's the thing. I was planning on yeah. garrisoning before. Yeah. Uh, so now I can actually move yeah, between EC, Kuala Lumpur, and one province, right? So I could take mm -hmm. all of this, yeah. move it here. Uh, and I guess that would be 5, et 3, 9. And you're going to move with 9 exactly. And you can only do a limited up anyway. So it doesn't matter. I just need nine, right? Un, deux, trois, un, deux, trois. <laughs> and wait a minute. Am I making a mistake here? Just need to check your march order. What does it do? Just moves into an adjacent space. That's it, right? No bad surprises. Yeah, might be better off safe. I'm just gonna place an extra one just to be sure I keep control. And then I'm going to do the airstrike. So this unit is gonna die. It's not pretty that's pretty useless. And the garrison, how much does it cost me? Uh it just two total. Yeah, yep. two total. So you could move you didn't move to anywhere else, but you could have moved to both ECs as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I and I could assault in one of those ECs, but I, I don't really see the well really see the purpose of it um i could i mean yeah i could mm -hmm. go here and yeah. um or could i go and i take one of those and place it here mm -hmm. and then in that one here i can kill it yeah that was critically important yeah because then well, i was thinking I don't. Is it you march per destination? Or? He can march, yeah, a destination space, and he can suck in all the adjacent ones. So with only ten cubes there, he has eleven adjacent between Selangor, the oh EC, yes, yeah, Keta. yeah. So if you had not killed the one in the EC, he could have taken Prak. Yeah, he could have taken yeah. it. Yeah, okay, just fair enough. abusing yeah. his just vastly superior knowledge of the coin series. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I was, I was win. biting my tongue. Yeah, yeah, I'm still biting my tongue. Though. Are you done with your turn, Fred? Uh, I'm just thinking about one thing. Da, da, da. Yeah, I think I think that I I just want to check because you could actually move in somewhere else uh, where it could be a problem, and that's the thing that I want to check. Um, you cannot do any damage by moving in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, Negas and Bilan is yeah could be just contested. So I think now I'm I'm done. Okay. Or do I want to place? I want to be super safe. That's the thing. I want to be super safe. No, that yeah, that's it. I'm done. Okay, good. So yeah, so you did you did place enough here, and you very nearly didn't, which would have been amusing. Um, but I can still do a limited march into here, like this, which loses me control here, but gains me control there, which is minus one net. 
Oh, yeah. You can still do that, um, which you could have avoided just by doing slightly differently, but I wasn't going to say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's just the final match, and then we go to the propaganda round. Um, just here. So, um, your support is six, and my relevant opposition is also six. So that's no change. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel like you're going to lose somehow, which doesn't seem right. One, two, three, four. No, I, I can yeah. explain to you how I think you might yeah. lose, but... Well, he's going to, and then... So there's no change from support, and then these two not that yeah. as well. Then... No, wait a minute. You only have, Joe... Um, you only have six with the two ECs, because he's got he's got new villages on everything else. Oh, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One... Yeah. Sorry, I miscounted. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I counted Negri Sembla. Yeah, whatever it was yeah. on before yeah. you moved. Yeah, I had, I had plus two, so, minus two, so it stayed at, uh, it stayed at yeah. seven. Yeah, so we should just say exactly at seven. Yeah. 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 Uh, and even with, so yeah, even with the shift in, uh, in the south, that would have been eight. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that just shifts to there. And then because we're at the end of the game, that's going to be a minor MCP victory. And we also now do this as well. So one, one prestige loss from the United Nations. Um, and then a minor, so a minor victory is called a scuttle. So I'll take one of these markers and put it on Malaya on the map for a scuttle, and uh, scuttle which is another minus two. Yeah. yeah, put me at seven. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that result actually. Yeah, so really paying attention. Why yeah. I was I thought that Fred was going to beat you, but what I was getting a little bit worried about is that he's using his new villages very well, but that's only subtracting your score and not adding yeah. his. Yeah. And so the cost, of course, of doing that is that you can't ex do this. The British really will win on that last campaign and needs to do this explosion of support mm -hmm. where you have, especially if you're using Templar, because then you can just make as long as that final prop check is giving you the advantage that's usually enough to get above 10. Mm -hmm. And so that yeah. probably, you know, you had to do a lot of shenanigans to stop Joe from taking Parak, but um, I do think that using some of your limited ops, rather than trying to kill every MCP piece to try to get the support, would have, because you ended with, you know, still a fair amount of money given all the assaults you did. And that's what I was thinking, like yeah. I took those extra six uh, and I end up mm -hmm. in five and actually it shows me that I didn't really need it. Um, and that prevented me from keeping Templar. Yeah. Uh, so I think actually taking that event, even if it felt good at that point to to bump my money back, I actually didn't need that 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 money. Yep. So so Stephen, what would this kind of, so the historical result was quite a big British victory. What, what would a result like this look like historically? Yeah, so this the, the Malaya game ends in about 1954-55, which is right when the bailing talks began, which is that the newly independent, what will be the newly independent uh, Malaysia leaders of the those nationalist parties we saw Fred play earlier, meet with the MCP. And they basically, because at that point, historically, the British would have been above 10 and really maybe even closer to, um, you know, 15 or so or something like that. Um, somewhere between let's say 12 and 15 they basically told the mcp you guys can go starve on the edge of thailand if you guys want but we're not going to negotiate with you these talks are just going to be you know determining the terms of surrender not uh actually negotiating but in a situation that looks like this i think the mcp have done enough that the nationalist parties might have negotiated with them a little bit more just so that they didn't derail the kind of post-independence period because essentially what the mcp have here is that you have a kind of um roughly broken <laughs> A main part of the uh, peninsula where like they've done enough economic sabotage and that there's a lot of new villages but the conditions are pretty economically poor in them and then they have this like rear base right up the border which is a ton of gorillas in and they probably could have used that to bargain similarly to how the fln in algeria used the forces outside of the country to kind of bargain with france even though they lost most of their um uh forces within the country kind of like how Joe has basically been cleaned out of the main peninsula. That's what I would have guessed would happen here. Great. Uh, that's good. So, yeah, that, that ends up with some MCP influence on the independent government, which is nice. Um, and that puts us kind of halfway down the Imperial Prestige track, which is bad but not terrible for Fred, I'd say. Um, so he's he's likely to continue losing some, but if he does well in Kenya and Cyprus, he could keep it around this kind of five or six level, probably. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's I also could still, yeah. I could gain more yeah. like if I if I stand firm yeah, 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 and yeah and win I could actually start bumping it up back yeah, yeah. and there's we were going to talk yeah go on. I was just going to yeah. say quickly that there's also a card in the late deck which if a British player is in kind of this position where they're worried that they're going to be able to keep it above you can do uh, Operation Musketeer which is the Suez um, which can actually get you it's basically a gamble to try to get you some Imperial Prestige back. 
So we were going to have a look at some of these other ones. So in particular, these three, Burma, Gold Coast, and Partition, which uh, didn't come up this campaign, but um, are how counters get placed on the rest of the map. So in Gold Coast, Burma, or India in this case, um, to reflect other things going on in the Empire. And maybe Stephen could just say a little about how those events work. Um, some yeah, some so of those might come up in the late deck for other areas as well. Outside of Partition, which is pretty much always going to be the British player trying to mitigate um, the, the Imperial Prestige loss. Some of these actually would allow the British player to gain some Imperial Prestige back because the general idea is that they're going to give up troops from the current game that they're playing temporarily to try to um, better handle their exit from some of these other colonies. And usually there's some gamble involved with like if you commit troops, for instance, in the Gold Coast, it there's a decent chance you'll get some Imperial Prestige back, but there's also some chance that you'll shoot at protesters and lose even more Imperial Prestige. So it's mainly this trade-off between um, balancing your Imperial Prestige, which is ultimately how you're going to win the campaign, and can you afford to give up some troops, which I think Fred might have been able to in this, even in this Malaya game, to um, you know avoid this bad event from happening, but then that might undermine your ability to perform well in the specific game that you're playing. Yep. Um, good. And I guess in this case, there's been uh, unusually quiet exits from these, these various colonies, basically. Yep. Yeah. So the British are taking a beating in the main <laughs> conflicts, but the, the other colonies are going pretty quietly. Cool. Great. Um, good. But I think we've heard it uh, for, for the this second episode on, on the Malayan uh, emergency. Uh, just one comment from Joe Klein. Uh, actually, there is a Twitch stream right now. So if you go on Twitch, uh, there is actually a Homo Ludens Twitch channel. And it is also being broadcasted there. At the same time, it's also broadcasted live on Twitter. So Joe, you're wrong. Get your facts straight. Great. Yeah. Good. And also, uh, so, you know, Fred's lost again. But if we were pl to plot a chart here, it's it's only upwards for Fred. He's gone from <laughs> a surrender to a scuttle. So, so maybe he'll be better in Kenya. Yeah, I'm really, it's it's really, I'm on an upward trend. I'm, 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 I'm coming back. Um, good. But uh, yeah, thanks for, um, thanks for, thanks for that. Any last comments, questions or anything? Or, or are we good to go? Oh, but there is one last question from uh, Ian here. Yeah, so we've gotten, I think this, both streams and we'll probably get it in the next two streams too because it's a very reasonable question which is can i play gandhi into the end of empire campaign and the answer is no simply because god most of gandhi is happening before the british way really starts if you think of gandhi's like 1917 and 1947 so like even the latest scenario of gandhi begins in 1930 and so uh you cannot integrate gandhi into the british way end of empire uh yet at least with what comes with the base game let's just say that Great, but thanks. Uh, thanks everyone who was watching tonight. Remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the show, you can support it by giving a bit of money on Coffee. And if you do, you will have access to the Discord server. Great Discord server. I, I don't even have access to the Discord server. No, you don't, but Steven does. Uh, so Steven is in there. All, all the cool kills are there. Um, so that's why you are not invited, Joe. You are not allowed. But it was great. Uh, had a lot of. Um, it was yeah, a lot of fun once again. Uh, I hope to win one at least in the campaign. We'll see. No. Uh, I must say I'm not really looking forward to Kenya. I think it's the hardest game for me to play. Um, and but uh, yeah, we'll have to play it anyway. So we'll be back in January for the game of uh, Kenya. And it's not a statement about the game; it's more about the topic. Uh, and I talked about it a bit in the in the dis in the Discord server. I actually had knew nothing about Kenya before uh, getting interested into that game. I started reading about it based on the book recommendation that Steven gave me uh, when we started playtesting it. And you actually have a great thread on BGG about book recommendation. It's reading this that actually, uh, yeah, it was really hard. <laughs> Didn't uh, expect this uh, pretty brutal uh, history right there. But it's good that we're talking about it. So let's meet in January and uh, for episode three to talk about the, uh, the, the war in Kenya. So thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Have a great evening, everyone. Uh, and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.